Well, good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to look beyond the basics of Teams. So I have a at least 30 minutes worth of information to share with you all. So we'll jump right into it. Let me share my screen. All right. Well, the first thing I want to show you uh, beyond the basics is when you go to at mention a team or a channel. So if I click on a team conversation here, I can just add team and it'll find the team that I am in. I am in this team or I can also add the channel and it will detect which channel I am in. Now the difference between at team and at channel uh, by default in either case, it will notify everybody on the team. The only exception is if you don't want to receive information from a chatty channel, you can always just do your three dots and hide the channel or so if I got notifications, sorry, do custom. And then here it says notify me each time this channel is mentioned. So you can actually turn that off. So if it's at a channel, you can say I don't want to receive channel notifications. OK. One of the big things that I get asked a lot is what happens if I want to get access only allow access to certain files or certain channels of a team. What we could do is create what's called an M365 group. So we always want to assign people to groups and then assign rights to, to files using groups. So what I mean is this, if I go into a file or a folder, I'm going to open up in SharePoint. So once I'm in SharePoint, which is of course behind the scenes of Teams, let's say for this channel, and we'll just use the MTN channel. I only want to give rights to certain people to this channel. Because again, a channel is just another folder in a document library. I'm going to select that and hit the three dots and say manage access. So by default, Members have edit access, owners, uh, of course, have owner access, and visitors, which I've already used this one, have visitor access. So we could always add other people to this, but we don't want to do that. We want to create a group and add people to the group. So to create a group, I'm going to go out to Outlook. So you can easily create a group within Outlook. On your menu bar, here is groups. So I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call this one MU Kelly G and I'm going to call this our beyond the beyond the basics of teams BBT. And I'm going to deselect this send all group uh, email. So because if I leave that checked, every time I add and remove people, everybody in the group will receive an email. So I'm going to deselect that and say create this team. And then I can just add people, uh, of course, to this team. And it picks it up from the global address list, as you see. But for now, I'm just going to create that team. OK, so now that I have that team created, I can come back into my uh, SharePoint site. And then when I go to manage access, I can now assign rights to that group. So if I say direct access, I can say MU Kelly G and I will find my um, BBT team or my group and I can notify them. So I can also give them either edit or view access to this folder. OK, and the reason I want to do it as a group, let's say me as Greg Kelly decide to change jobs or uh, take on a different responsibility. I can always go to my address book in Outlook and I can look up and see what groups is Greg Kelly a member of. OK. So I'll search my name, open it up and it'll show me what groups I'm a member of. So here's some example of O groups. So these are some M365 groups. So when I go to leave or change roles, I can come in here open that up and then remove access to the groups that I no longer need. And once I remove access to those groups, I no longer have access to those folders. So that's the benefit of using groups instead of a user and the ability to add people to 
these um, folders and our channels. We've also discovered, let's say that I am a supervisor and or even a director, and I need access to a lot of different folders in different teams, but I do not want to become members of all the teams, and I don't want to see a bunch of, uh, because I don't want to list out a bunch of teams, okay? One way that we do that is we do the same thing. So we first we give them rights, we add them to a group. For example, that M365 group I just created. Then what we would do is come down to an, one of the teams. Let's say uh, my open form Q&A. So here's a completely different team. That group that I just created, that MU Kelly G B B T. I can give them rights to the folder on a completely other team where I'm not even a member of the team, okay? So again, what I would do is come into this team anywhere and I am going to go back again out to SharePoint and I'm going to manage access to this team, okay? And it doesn't matter which folder I choose, but in this case, I'm going to pick up this open Q&A folder here now when I manage access, instead of just adding that that group, I'm just going to make them either a visitor because here it says it says vid, visitors have read access. So I can make them part of the visitors group or I can make them a member of the members group and uh, give them edit access. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to allow the supervisor to be a be a member, but I'm not going to make him I'm gonna give a member rights and not make him a member of the team okay so they'll the same rights as members but the team will not show up so I'm just gonna click on advanced and here I see okay I have members owners and visitors if I want them to become a member if I want them to have the same rights as a member I'm gonna click on the members access and I'm gonna click on new and I'm gonna add a user to this group, to the members group. So now when I say, I'm gonna add the MU Kelly G BBT. So any member that's a member of this uh, M365 group now has access and now has member access to this team. So people might say, well, how are they gonna to get to the files if they're not a member of the team? So what we would do now, so they would have access, they'll have rights to those folders. So then I will come back to this open form QA. And so now we want them to have access to this folder. So I could just copy this address within SharePoint and go back to the team that they belong to, okay? Let's say that they're a member again of this team and, um, within this MTM folder, sorry, within this MTN channel, I can set up a tab that will point to this channel here. I'll just simply do that by clicking the plus. And I'll just simply use a website. If you don't see website here, you can search for it, but here's website. And the website name, I'm gonna say this is from the the uh, M365 training uh, Q&A. Okay. And then the URL, of course, will just be that address that we copied. I don't need to post about that, but I'll hit save. So now if I come here, I can see the contents of this, of these files, right? And I'm not a member of the team, but I have rights to it. And I can easily access that through the SharePoint site, okay? So that's something that's been a handy feature for a lot of people because again, they do not wanna see all the different teams that they need access to. They just need access maybe to certain folders, certain channels. And since I'm a member of this, now the M365 training, I can do multiple channels or folders, okay? And you could build this out. I just did one. Uh, what you could do is create a list and within that list have the links to all the different channels that you, that you need access to.
Uh, something else I wanted to mention. Let's say that I have a channel here. And I want I'm going to create a channel. I'm going to add a channel. And this is going to be our BBT name. Sorry, name one. And I'm going to add that channel. OK, so I see the BPT name name one. If, and you'll see it here, BPT named it one. If I go out to SharePoint, you'll see it here. Go back to documents. If I go up a level, you'll see it here as well. OK. What I want to show you is and what I want, what's really important. Some people come in here and they're like, you know what? This is not supposed to be BPT name one. They want to rename their channel. So I'm going to click on this. Oops, let me get the right one. And I'm going to say, you know, edit this channel. And I'm going to give it a different name. This is supposed to be BBT name two. OK, so I'm going to rename that channel. What you need to know is even though it shows BBT name two, name two. If I come in here to files, you'll see that in the background is what this is. So on SharePoint, even though in Teams it's showing this, it did, doesn't automatically rename it in SharePoint. And I can go out to SharePoint and look at that. Here's BPT name one. Still, you don't see a name two. If I try to rename it here, it'll just it, it'll still have a BBT name one. Um, that is true right now, but that is being uh, rolling out that it'll stay synced because sometimes that happens and, and people don't find their folders where they renamed it to and the original name is still there. So just be aware of that if you're renaming uh, channels. One thing that people really like and I think it's really important. We use OneDrive and Teams, which is SharePoint is behind Teams. We all know that. But if you upload a video to either Teams, which is SharePoint or OneDrive. I want to show you. Um, let me just go into my OneDrive because I have videos there. So now when you upload a video to OneDrive, you can have it generate a transcript for you or you can upload a VTT file, which is a transcript to a video. So I'm going to come down here to un, under again in my OneDrive and I'm going to go down to my videos. And I'm just going to pick. Oops, sorry. Let me go to recordings. I'm going to come here to recordings. Um, so these are all MP4 files. I'm going to just go pick up one of my recordings that I've done. Once I start my open my up in my recording, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Pause it. But you'll notice up here now it's actually highlighting. There's a video settings option, so if I click on that here, it says transcripting captions is turned off. I can drop that down and I can say I like to generate. Uh, in English, a VTT. I can also, like I said, if I already have one, I can upload it to this video. But if I click on generate. An English transcript, it will generate one for me. So we'll give that a little time and uh, we'll come back to that and I'll show you what that transcript looks like. OK, so here we're back in our OneDrive file and let's look at the file that we ask it to uh, generate the transcript for. So here's the file and if I just open up the file, I will see the recording. It will start here. Here if I turn on this transcript to view it. You'll see the transcript. And they will follow along as I am speaking. And then from here, of course, you can download the transcript if you wish, but now it is available. Another thing I want to show you is um, I think I want to make sure everybody's aware of. Um, of this in Windows, we're used to working within what's called the file explorer, this little manila envelope. We like the look and feel of moving files around. And uh, of course, you know how to do this on a Mac, but I just want to show you here on Windows. We, we have a place where we like to. Uh, again, copy files, but if you're in in teams, there's not really an easy way. Let me just pull up a, a channel that has some files in it. So it's not a really an easy way to drag and drop this to other channels. What they've done. Is they've now added with it used to have to go out to SharePoint to do this, but now they've added within the files feature. 
the team. I can add a shortcut to OneDrive to this channel. So I'll see MU emails channel. If I add that to OneDrive, I'm going to add that shortcut, click on that. It's adding it. It's called MU emails. So now if I go back to uh, my OneDrive, if I let, give it a little time to synchronize here, I will see this MU email show up pretty soon. And it will look like this little link here. There's a little icon on the folder here. It looks like a link. So if I click on that, that is actually my files in OneDrive, uh, sorry, in uh, Teams. So now I can easily, you know, drag and drop this to other shortcuts um, just right within OneDrive. Another nice feature is when I go out to the web version, I can access my files again from OneDrive or if I'm in email, I can easily drag and drop files within there. I do not see that yet. I have a kind of a lot of things going on here, but those that will, uh, I promise you that will show up. So um, another thing I want to show you about OneDrive, let me just go out to the web, the, the, the cloud version or the web version. I can right click on that and say view online. So we'll look at our, my OneDrive online. And here's my MU emails here. So you, this is your, uh, again, your OneDrive. I can easily see some of my um, team files here. Now what they've done is they've added, you can go to more places within OneDrive. And here I can find all my team files, all, all the teams that I'm on, okay? So you could, from OneDrive, even, even those that you haven't uh, made a shortcut to, right? This is irregardless of that. I can easily go to my team's files from OneDrive. So if I go to more places, here's my the uh, team that I've been working in. I click on that team and I can see all my files that's within uh, my team. And let's see if I click on one of these, let's say my general channel, you have the option of moving moving documents around, okay? Let's see. And what I just, I kind of casually mentioned it is, is that you can now move documents without having to come out to the web version of Teams. So you used to have to only select a file and then you could um, move your option. You can move files and copy files to other places. But now you can do multiple ones, including folders. Okay, so this was a big ask and I'm not sure it should have been here all along, but now it is available within Teams. But you can highlight those and then you can say copy to or move to. So if I say copy to, I can browse to other teams. Where do you want to copy your folder or your files and folders to? Uh, another thing that's been added or that I really like within teams are called workflows. So to add workflows features, you would just come down to your three dots and you would just type in workflows. Here's my workflows and you would just click on that and you would add it. Mine says open because I've already got it added, but you can add workflows. And then once it's been added to access it, you actually come down here to your applications, your apps. Here you see your apps. And let me just minimize that just by clicking this up carrot. Here you see workflows. So now within workflows, you'll see all the categories of different workflows, all the templates. There's some editors picks, kind of the popular ones. For example, here's a workflow and it'll load it'll load all the applications it needs because behind the scenes of all this is Power Automate, right? But for example, here's schedule replies. So you can schedule a reply to be sent at a later time. So let me click on schedule a reply. And this reply is going to be called, um, well, we'll just leave the scheduled reply. You can, you can type in whatever you want. It says you need to have Teams connected. So I'm gonna hit sign in. It'll verify that I'm connected to Teams. And I'm gonna say, yes, let's add that workflow. So now I have a workflow called schedule a reply where I can send a reply to a message back at a later time. Now to access that, let me come into a Teams chat. Okay, sorry about the interruption there. My Teams actually froze up for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on, but I went ahead and logged into Teams on the web. Uh, it's the same interaction, it'll work the same. So I have added the app, if I go to apps, 
I've added the workflow of schedule a reply. And the way that works is, let's say I'm just going to come in here to one of my posts. So here's one from Dwight, and I want to reply to that, but I'm going to schedule that. You will find that under the three dots and under more actions, you'll see where it says schedule a reply. If I click on the schedule a reply, let that load, I can set the date, the time, and I can notify myself when the message is posted, and then the reply I want to send. Let's say that I want to send this um, tomorrow, and then let's say I'll, I'll do it at the end of the day. So I'll do it at five o'clock right when I leave. Here's your answer or something and just hit submit. And then it'll send it at that time uh, on that date for this reply. OK, and, but that's just an example. There's a lot of other workflows that you might benefit from. And the last one I want to show you, and I have a lot of other topics we can discuss, but maybe you want to set up some training for your group. You can have your own training that you've developed or maybe some Microsoft training. So I can come in here to one of my tabs. Um, I'm just going to pick on this HRG. I'm going to hit the plus. What I'm going to add is the Viva Learning. I have it here at the top of it again. If I don't see it, I can search Viva and there's Viva Learning. It will ask me, and you can name your tab, and maybe we're going to talk about some M365 training. And I'm not going to post information about it. It says, what do you want to learn? I can just look that up. And actually, and actually maybe Viva is new to us. Let's change this and let's do Viva training. So I want to search for Viva. It will search, and here's a, all, everything, some Microsoft um, learn stuff, some LinkedIn learning. I'm not sure if we have a license for that or not, uh, but you can scroll down and see what different topics. Uh, get started with Viva Learning. That sounds like a good one. And you can do multiples. Maybe you can say, I want to make sure they do the um, get started and uh, v Microsoft and LinkedIn Learning introduction to Viva topics. So I can make like a, a path, maybe a learning path that I want my uh, team to look into, okay, on board with Viva Insights. So I'm just gonna click, select those three and hit save. So these are some topics I want my team to go through. And I can have a different Viva training uh, edition. Maybe this will Viva training, then I have an M365 training list. And like this one here, Introduction to Viva is 28 minutes. So I can click on that and I can go through the learning. Here's the related courses to it. So if you have some, um, your own training, you can upload your own training in here, or you can search through uh, Microsoft and uh, LinkedIn Learning. So those are kind of uh, handy plugins as well. I think we have time that I will show you one more thing. Here at MU Training, I get a lot of questions about forms, you know, filling out uh, different forms. You can always add, let me add forms here. So here, if I had forms, so it's like Qualtrics. If I had a form here, it's, it's gonna ask, do you wanna create a shared form? If I create a new form here, this, is, this will be uh, part of my team. So I'm in the HR, this is going to be my HRG uh, form. This one, the team can edit it and they can see the results. So we're going to work together on creating this form. So now if I create the form, you'll see it here. And the, like I said, the team, everybody who's a part of this channel, they can come in here and they can develop this team, a collaborative effort. So we're going to edit it. You could also create your forms on your own, right? So I can go out to office.com and I can go to forms and then I can develop my own form. So you'll want to do this in the case where you would want to let me hit plus again and do forms. This time, instead of saying create a form, I'm going to add an existing form. So these are the ones that I've done personally. So let's uh, let's use my demo form. It's a personal form, so I own it. Here it says, do you want to collect responses? So if I want to have a form I want my team to fill out, 
then I'll say, yeah, I want to collect responses from my team for this form. So I want my team to fill out this form. So here they will see the questionnaire, okay? And the third option, let's say that I'm on a team and we, I sent out a form to people and I want my team to see the results of a form. In that case, I would again, click on the form, add plus, click on the form. I'm gonna add the form that I sent out for my team. And again, I'll go back to my demo form. This time, instead of choosing collect responses, I'm gonna drop that down and say, I wanna show results from the form. It says anyone with it can view the summary of the responses. So it's gonna create this uh, web address. So I'm gonna hit save that. So this one will see the responses, okay? So let's see, this is red. So I'm gonna come back to this and I'm gonna fill this out. I'm gonna say red. And since I click that, I have some bridging here and I'm gonna say, I don't have any experience here. Uh, above average, uh, Power Automate and OneNote, okay. I can upload a file, but I'm gonna submit this form. It says, thanks. So now I can come back here and I'll see live results. So here's mine and it shows the Likert, that's what it's called. So that's the results. So you can see you can work collaboratively on a form. You can make your own personal form and ask your team to fill it out or you can also share results, okay? So I just wanna show you those examples as well. Well, thank you guys. I hope this has been beneficial. We'll have more of these uh, Beyond the Basics um, each month.